by transcription. Friends, be sure to stay tuned until the end of the program when my friend Irma will bring you news of her offer to be your secretary. my roommate, Irma Peterson. Would you like an idea of her mentality? Well, she thinks a matador is something you wipe your feet on before you go into a house. <laughs> Seriously, the other night we were playing charades, acting out the names of famous plays, and soon it was Irma's turn. She grabbed a carving knife, ran it through a box of ends. So I said, Irma, what's the name of that play? And Irma said, Dead Ends! <laughs> Yes, everybody knows our plays all right, but here's something you should know, that N stop triple O. Yes, N's, E-N-N-D-S, the really effective chlorophyll tablets, stop odors of body, stop odors of breath, stop odor of fence, stop all three. Keep you fresh as a daisy all day, all over. It's amazing, but one or two tiny N's tablets are all you need to stop triple O. And now ends America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, a proud to present your favorite comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane in... My Friend Irma. Oh, gosh, you asleep, honey? No, not yet. Oh, Jane, did you have a good time with Richard tonight? Did I have a good time, sweetie? It was just divine. Look, look at what he gave me. Oh, what a beautiful brooch. Jane, do you think you should accept it? Why not? It's from my boyfriend, not my congressman. <laughs> look here. Look here. Look what he wrote in the little card. Look, a businessman knows few words of love. His mind is all figures and facts. Suffice to say, I'll cherish the day when I can write you off on my income tax. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It's almost as beautiful as the card on the gift Al gave me. Al gave you a gift? Yes, he just left. Look what he bought me. A revolver? <laughs> <laughs> What's he want you to do, shoot yourself so he can collect the insurance? Oh, no, Jane, it's a cigarette lighter. You see, you press a trigger and it lights up. Oh, it certainly looks like a real gun. What did he write on the card? Oh, it's so tender. To my chicken. Press this trigger and you'll see flame and fire. Will you marry me so I can retire? Ah, <laughs> uh, he's such a lover. Yeah, he is. A real arrow, will you lend me a fin? <laughs> Come on, honey, let's get to sleep. It's almost midnight, huh? All right, Jane. Uh, do you think the brooch will be safe on the dresser? Oh, yeah, I think so, huh? I'm sleeping with Al's gift under my pillow. Lots of luck. See, I better call Hilda, tell her to bring the ledgers in tomorrow. Well, I, I wouldn't disturb her now. Why not? Her phone is out of order. <laughs> How come? Irma, the wire is cut. I know. The cord on our electric iron is a little short, and I didn't think it would hurt if I borrowed just a little piece. <laughs> I tied the two ends together. Yeah, it's a lovely bowl. Come on, will you turn out the lights? Okay. You set the clock? Yeah, and I fixed the chimes. They weren't working right. Good girl. Good night, honey. Good night, Jane. <laughs> Irma, I thought you fixed the chimes. I did. Well, what do you know? It's 15 o'clock. <laughs> you walking around? No, is it you? <laughs> no. Then it must be somebody else. <laughs> Let's 
Let's go to sleep. Mama, I hear somebody. Well, maybe it's the cat. <laughs> a cat doesn't make that much noise. Maybe he's carrying a heavy mouse. <laughs> Irma, I see a flashlight. And don't tell me the mouse got away and the cat's looking for it. <laughs> oh, Jane. Well, what do we do? Hand me the phone. Hand me the phone. I'll call the police. Well, the phone is out of order. Oh. Well, reach under your pillow and get me that cigarette lighter that looks like a gun. Go on. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. Hurry up. Right here it is. Put on the lights. Wait a minute. I look a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Irma, you're not going to dance with him. Put on the light. <laughs> All right, here goes. Uh, stand where you are. Huh? If, 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 if you move, I'll shoot. All right, lady. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Irma, Irma, come over here. You keep him covered with this gun. And I'll run down to Mrs. O'Reilly's. I'll call the police. All right. You may sit down, sir, but don't move. Thanks, lady. My name's Irma Peterson. What's yours? Harry. <laughs> Gosh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Harry. Are you married? Yeah. Does your wife know you do this for a living? Well, she should. She's waiting for me downstairs in the car. <laughs> well, what about your poor mother? She's driving. My wife ain't got no license. <laughs> Lady, please don't let your girlfriend turn me over to the police. Don't you move her. I'll, I'll shoot you with this gun. I will move. But please, I'll give you back this stuff. Just don't let the cops get me. But think of my kids. Oh, you have children? Yeah, three. Two is married and one went straight. <laughs> Lady, do you mind if I smoke? No, not at all. Well, what's the matter? I ain't got no match. Oh, well, here. Oh, no, you know. Oh, I'm surprised that you <laughs> Make him believe that was a real gun. That ain't honest. So I refuse to stay any longer. Goodbye. Where is he? I'm over here. Yes, and the police are coming. Jeannie, I don't see any burglar. Irma, where is he? Why are you looking out the window? He got away. But you had him covered with that pistol lighter. I know, but I forgot it wasn't real and he wanted to smoke. Oh, you idiot. Where are you going, Jane? Oh, gosh, I want to see if the brooch Richard gave me. It's gone. Irma, it's gone. Oh, gee, just gave it to me tonight. I mean, you better go into the bedroom and ask her to forgive you. All right. Professor, we'll wait here and talk to the police. All right, but I hope you don't mind if I don't look at you, Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with that cold cream and that white nightcap you're wearing, you look like a bottle of frozen milk that has popped its top. <laughs> No, please, you got to excuse me for laughing, but such things I've never seen before. Uh, tell me, what, what, what are those antennas sticking out of your head? <laughs> those are hair curlers. Yeah. And what is that small hammock around your neck? That's a chin strap to keep from getting double chins. And what are those white cotton gloves? They keep my hands soft and girl-like. <laughs> and what is that junk around your eyes? That's anti-wrinkle cream. Miss O'Reilly, wouldn't it be simpler to stay in your room all day and keep the door locked? <laughs> now, look here, you. Open up. No, who's the police? I'm Mulligan of the robbery detail. Who are you? Yeah, my name is Professor Kilpatsky. Yes. I see. And uh, this is your wife? Only a man that's carrying a gun could get away with a remark. <laughs> This is Mrs. O'Reilly, the landlady. Excuse my appearance. <laughs> I just got out of bed. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Auto accident? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Now, where have you got the burglar? He got away. Well, that's great. Let me talk to the girl who called in. A yeah, girl? Come out. The man from the police is here. Uh, which one of you called in? I did. I did. My roommate here, Irma Peterson, had him covered with this pistol lighter, and then when he asked for a match, she gave him a light. Pull yourself together, Janie. You better do the same thing, Mrs. O'Reilly. Your hammock is swinging from one ear. <laughs> What's that? I don't know whether it's 22 o'clock or Friday. <laughs> oh, officer, do you think there's any chance of recovering that brooch? I can't tell you what it means to me, honest. Well, we haven't got much to go on. Did you get a look at the guy? Yes, and I think I could point him out if I saw his picture. Well, you drop in tomorrow and look at our collection. Good night. Go to bed, Janie, and try to get some sleep. Oh, gosh, that beautiful brooch. Oh, it may turn up. I remember when I was first married, I gave my husband a watch fob with my picture in it. And of course, he lost it. Mr. Raleigh, he didn't lose the fob. He threw it away because your picture was stopping his watch. <laughs> Good night, girl. Come on, Mr. Raleigh. Well, come on, Irma. Let's get to bed. I want to be down at that police station early. All right. Wait a minute. Why are you putting fluid in that lighter now? Well, in case another burglar comes in, I want to make sure the gun is loaded. <laughs> oh, 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 guard against triple O. Yes, guard against triple O. Odor of breath, odor of body, odor of fence. If you've been using old-fashioned body deodorants, mouthwashes, toothpaste, or deodorant soap to avoid offending, now here's an easier, quicker, much more effective way to keep fresh as a daisy all over, all day long. Take ends today. Chase triple O away. Yes, one or two tiny ends chlorophyll tablets protect you against triple O, against all three odor offenses. No muss, no fuss. Stop triple O in minutes. Prove it with a famous ENDS test. Rub an onion slice on your hand. Now take an ENDS chlorophyll tablet. Moisten and rub it on the same spot. The odor's gone. That's how ENDS work where odors begin inside your body to stop triple O. And remember, ENDS contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. Don't expect such lasting protection from cheaper chewing gum and candy substitutes which contain so little chlorophyll. Take ENDS today. Chase Triple O away. Insist on ENDS, called ENDS, because they end your worries about Triple O. That's E-N-N-D-S, ENDS chlorophyll tablets. Safe, safe as any garden vegetable. Pleasant tasting. Trial size ENDS, only 49 cents at drug counters everywhere. Larger sizes, even more economical. And remember, friends, stay tuned until the end of today's show to hear the latest news on my friend Irma's offer to be your secretary. How is my pistol packing mama? Oh, Professor, I'm just going crazy waiting for Janie to come back from the police station. Will you help me open this window? Oh, sure. There, it's open. Oh, gosh, I want to go outside and see if the burglar left any footprints on their fire escape. <laughs> I made it rain last night. I know, but if he was wearing rubbers, his footprints would still be dry. I'll be right back. <laughs> So come in, there'll be dancing tonight. Shrimp boats. There's the shrimp boats outside. I can hear the fog horn. <laughs> oh, good morning, Professor. This is all right. Ooh, how different you look from when I saw you last night. That chin strap you're wearing certainly works. Got to go to me double chin, didn't it? Yeah, yeah no more double chin. Now you got a triple neck. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Jenny, any luck at the police station? No, Miss O'Reilly. While I was there, I saw every type of criminal imaginable. But, but there was no worried about the brooch or the burglar? No, none. I've been doing some thinking. I'd, uh, I'd kind of like to talk to Irma alone. She's on the fire escape. 
Come on, Professor, let's go for a walk in the park. I'll even let you hold me hand. <laughs> what is this holding hands business? Well, you know, this is leap year. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Well, let me warn you, Mrs. O'Reilly, as fast as you can leap, I can sidestep. <laughs> Come in here. I'm coming, Jane. Be careful. Now, don't fall. Sit down, Irma. I, um, I want to talk to you. Irma, um, I'm moving out of here. Moving out? Why? Well, look, I forgave you when you cut a hole in my new spring hat so the bird on top of it could duck inside in case it rained. <laughs> And the letter you sent to President Truman asking him to make Labor Day follow Easter Sunday because the chickens have to lay so many eggs on Easter they deserve to have the next day off. Well, I like to spread sunshine. Yeah, well, your sunshine is of the California variety. <laughs> now, Irma, I, uh, honestly, I, I just can't take it anymore. So if, if you don't mind, I've got some packing to do. Oh, please, Jane, you can't leave me. Well, I'm tired of trying to explain you to my friends. At least when you were in the wax, I had an excuse. I used to tell them you were shell-shocked. <laughs> I'll re-enlist. Oh, no. No, I couldn't do this to my country. <laughs> go on, Irma, you're late. You better go to work, and when you come back, I'll, I'll kiss you goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Will you stop that bawling and do your work, or do I have to come in there? I've got to cry, Mr. Klein. I'm so upset. Now, let me tell you something, young lady. <laughs> What's the matter? Look at you. In a typewriter, I must be wiping my face with carbon paper. <laughs> well, wash it off. I'm in no mood for a minstrel show. <laughs> Mr. Claude, can I go home? Home? You just got here. We've got work to do. But Jane's moving out on me. <laughs> She is? Well, that's unfair. Why should she get a break like that and not me? <laughs> now, get that letter out. I'll try. Mr. Clyde, do you know a burglar about six feet two with brown eyes? No. Why, you're thinking of dropping Al for something better? <laughs> no, a burglar came into our house last night and stole Jane's brooch. What? Well, did you see the thief? Oh, yes. In fact, I had quite a long talk with him. Oh, you did. Well, then they're sure to pick him up. He's probably still wandering around in the day. <laughs> now, come on. Let's get back to work. Take a look. What is all this junk on your desk? Well, these are the gifts Al gave me through the years. I'm going to pawn them so I can buy a new brooch for Jane. Then maybe she won't move out. These are gifts? Your boyfriend must have important connections. Who does he know with the street cleaning department? I'm not going to have you say that. You don't know the hours of happiness these gifts represent. But I'd sell everything in the world. Everything. If I could keep Jane from leaving me. Oh, now don't worry, Miss Peterson. Everything will work out all right. And if you want to, dear, you can take the rest of the day off. Oh, thank you, Mr. Clyde. You're a sweet man, and I hope you live forever. Forever? Yes, I forgot to pay the premium on your insurance policy. Get out! Out! Hiya, chicken. Where you been? I just came from work. Oh. Gee, I hate to see you hawk all them beautiful things I gave you. Well, I'm 
I'm worried. Are you sure they're all solid gold like you said? Well, sure, chicken. Look what's printed on the back of them. G-O-L-D P-L-A-T-E-D Hey, you see? That's better than gold. It's, it's, it's gold and platinum. <laughs> uh, uh, let, let's go inside, chicken. My friend Benny owns this joint. Combination fence and hot shop. Come on, Al. Uh, let's get in this line. Who's next? Me. How much you give me for this brooch? Is it stolen goods? How dare you? <laughs> I opened the box of Cracker Jack, and there it was. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, for the brooch, uh, I can give you... Uh, pardon me, sir. Will you hurry it up? I have to... Look, lady, I was here ahead of... Oh, holy mackerel. Oh, Al, that's the man who took Jane's brooch. His what? brooch? Yes, Al, grab him. Lady, remember my wife and three kids. Yeah, well, don't worry. The way I'm going to break you up, there'll be a piece for each one of them. <laughs> Janie, I'm so glad you changed your mind about moving out on Irma. After all, you two girls are like a breath of spring to me. Warmth, brightness, and sunshine. I don't think that's a very nice thing to say. After all, I'm here. My, how the weather has changed. <laughs> oh, well. How can I move out on Irma? I always threatened, but I could never do it. Never. Somebody has to be around. Only to open the window when she closes it on her head. <laughs> you know she loves you, Janie. I love her too, Professor. I'm not taking any more chances. First of all, I gave away that pistol lighter, and I got a real pistol. You threw away the pistol lighter and got the real gun? I sure did. If any more burglars come in here, I'll handle them. Oh, Janie, you're still here. I'm so happy. I ran all the way. Yeah, I'm still here, honey. Look what, look what I got back for you. You got my brooch. You're a doll. <laughs> and just in time, Richard will be here any minute. I want to go in the bedroom and put it on. I'll see you later, Professor. Come on, Miss O'Reilly. The celebration is on me. There's a new picture. A girl in every port. Uh, with, with, with Groucho Marx and Marie Wilson. Yeah. Uh, that Groucho Marx is wonderful. Uh, Marie Wilson is kind of stupid, but I like her. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, I'm uh... Fine, thank you. Uh, Jane will be right out. Won't you sit down? Oh, gladly. I've had a rough day at the office. Oh, you mind if I smoke? Oh, of course not. Not at all. <laughs> Shucks, I've left my cigarette lighter at the office. Oh, I have one somewhere around here. Uh, where was it? Uh. Oh, here it is. Now, hold steady, Richard. Here we go. <laughs> Too much fuel in it. <laughs> I'll have to get Richard another cigarette. Back to Irma and Jane in a moment. But first, remember that scientific odor test that proved N stop triple O stop odors of breath, odors of body, and odor offense for over eight out of ten people? Well, these amazing results were substantiated the other day at the annual meeting of a national scientific group. A leading medical authority stated... And for our test, I selected the chlorophyll tablets known as ENDS. Our tests included executives, office workers, and factory workers, too. General odor of body and breath were most successfully treated. Yes, after hundreds and hundreds of examinations, science proved ENDS effective. Just one or two tiny ENDS chlorophyll tablets daily actually do stop triple O because ENDS contain 100 milligrams, a fully effective dose of Daritol chlorophyll. Beware of cheaper chewing gum and candy substitutes that contain so little chlorophyll or that do not state their chlorophyll content on the label. ENDS work inside your body where odors start, keep you fresh as a daisy all over, all day long. ENDS stop triple O. Stop all three odor offenses. Give more complete, more lasting protection than any old-fashioned body deodorant, soap, mouthwash, or toothpaste can possibly give you. 
Insist on ends to stop triple O. Pleasant tasting ends are easy to use too. And safe. Safe as any garden vegetable. That's E N N D S. Ends chlorophyll tablets. Trial size only 49 cents at drug counters everywhere. Larger sizes even more economical. And now, here's my friend Irma with news of her offer to be your secretary. If you Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait just a minute. Before Irma says anything at all, I want to explain what she means. We'll save time that way. Ladies and gentlemen, what my friend Irma wants to say is this. Today is the last time she will have the chance to repeat her offer to work as secretary for a day to the person who bids the highest amount to the March of Dimes anti-polio fund. Yeah, I wonder who my new boss is going to be. Well, whoever it is, Cookie, you've got to do a good job because it's for a worthy cause. Oh, sure, Jane. I know I'm going to be a very good secretary. I'll do everything except take dictation. (laughs) Except take dictation? That's right. After all, this is still a free country, and I don't believe in dictators. (laughs) See what I mean? Be my guest. Folks, perhaps Irma Peterson isn't the greatest secretary in this world, but you'll have to admit that Irma's real self, Marie Wilson, would make a decorative addition to any office. So send in your bids to the March of Dimes now, and perhaps my friend Irma, in the person of the beautiful Marie Wilson, will become your secretary for a day. The deadline for you to write or wire in your bid is midnight tomorrow, Monday, January 21st. The winning bidder's name will be announced at the close of next week's My Friend Irma show. And all the money contributed by the winner will go toward the March of Dimes fight against infantile paralysis. Also, not only is my friend Irma in the person of Marie Wilson donating her own services for the March of Dimes, but has also arranged for a polio victim selected by the March of Dimes headquarters to receive a complete secretarial course at the Catherine Gibbs School in New York. And friends, we're very happy to announce that the highest bid we've received to date is $5,000 which was sent in by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Fort Worth, Texas, who want Irma to work as secretary for a day in the Infantile Paralysis Chapter Headquarters at Fort Worth. But remember, there's still time for you to send in your bid for my friend Irma between now and midnight of January 21st. And if yours is the winning bid, Marie Wilson will fly to your town to work in your office as your secretary for a day. And then you, too, will find out just what it's like to spend the day with my friend, Irma. My Friend Irma is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Park Levy, who writes the script with Stanley Adams. Pat Burton is associate producer. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conrad was heard as Professor Kropotkin. Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Alan Reed as Mr. Clyde. And Life Erickson as Richard. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. You can't have a sparkling personality if you don't have sparkling eyes. And you can't have sparkling eyes if they're tired, dull, red from lack of sleep, driving, wind, or glare. So get eye gene. One or two drops in each eye float away that tired eye feeling. Leave eyes refreshed. Then your whole face lights up. Hygiene is like a prescription. Contains Lexitol, a tonic for your eyes. Safe, gentle. Hygiene, E-Y-E-G-E-N-E, at drug counters everywhere. Trial size only 25 cents. Larger sizes even more economical. Be with us next Sunday at this time when ENDS, America's most popular chlorophyll tablets, again bring you My Friend Irma. Carl Caruso speaking. And now stay tuned for Aramis Brooks, starring Eve Arden, who follows immediately on most of these CBS stations. My friend Irma was transcribed. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>